And welcome everybody, Saturday morning. It's time for the KDHX Folk School slash Camp Possum. Tune session. Are you ready to start? I'm ready to start. We're going to play a tune from Kenny Baker slash Bill Monroe. I love the slash. Uh, isn't there a rock, rock and roll shredder guitar player named Slash? I think there is. Where's the big top hat? But he's not here today. So we're going to play this tune from Kenny Baker. Now, I do have dots for all you who are patrons at patreon.com forward slash Charlie Walton. I do have dots, but I see now after... Sometimes I do these dots late at night, and I see there's quite a lot of mistakes on this, so don't rely on these too much. It's a very general guideline. I'll clean these up after the first of the year and repost them. And if you want them, you can always message me, bigfiddleshow at gmail.com. I'll send you the new improved dots after the first of the year. But I do see there's, as I started to play through this thing again, there are quite a few errors, shall I say. Or it doesn't really uh, reflect the way I play the tune as well as it could. So, but we're going we're gonna to struggle on anyway. So let me just see if I can play through this thing. I, this is a tune I've played for years and years, but kind of just messed around with. So I'm trying to clean my version up here. <clears throat> by showing it to you. I forget who requested this. Maybe Ken, my buddy Ken from down in uh, Branson, Missouri. But uh, anyway, we're, we're going to give it a go here. So let's try it right now. The Mississippi Waltz. Now, so we're going to play an F here. <coughs> Excuse me. And before we're done, I will, uh, we're going to, before we start teaching the tune, I will walk through uh, all the notes in F. If you haven't played an F, F D minor kind of, it's got that sort of sound to it. But uh, so let's go ahead. Here we go. I'm just going to kind of play a single note version here. lot of slides. Uh, a little stiff here this morning. Got to get to work my fingers out. But uh, you can use a lot of slides and different uh, tricks to get this tune going. So uh, let's let's start out now. Let's go play. I'm sure you've heard this tune if you're a bluegrass uh, fiddle aficionado. You've heard this tune many times. It's uh, one of Kenny Baker's really kind of prized cool waltzes and a Bill Monroe mandolin piece too. Uh, so let's play, let's, let's figure out where we are in F. You know, F has one flat and all the other notes are natural. So if we start here on this F right here, let me double check my tuning here. Just a little bit minor adjustment required. All right, so, so if we start here on this F on the, on the, uh, on the uh, D string, you know that 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 note you play with the second finger on the on the fiddle uh, is the one that gives most people a lot of problems because it wants to be either this or this F sharp, but a lot of times it's this the note that's between. So you want to be sure you're actually playing F natural. So let's do that. Let's play F. And we got a visitor, Kim. Hey, how's it going? All right, and Tyler. Thanks for coming, guys. All right, so let's see here. Let, let's let's just play this thing. Let's find this F on the on the D string. Now the G. Now play open A. B flat. If you haven't played an F again, B flats were kind of right next to the nut, but not right next to it. Now play, find this C, D. E. Okay, now come back down. F. Open E. D. C natural. B flat. Open A. G. F. Okay, 
So let's try that scale here. I'm going to do uh, one tap, boom, bump. So here we go. Okay, now let us uh, see. I always like to look at the music when I'm using music and uh, see what the highest note is. Let's see. The highest note is the A on the, uh, on the uh, E string, the third finger on the E string, and the lowest note in the tune is uh, a C on the G string. So that's the full, so from here to here. That's the uh, full range of the tune. So we're going to try to play F scale using that range. So first, let's, we're going to play right now. We're going to start back on that F on the D string and play all the way up to the A on the E string. Are you with me on that? So here we go. One, two, ready, go. Back down. Now if we go on down, we can play F, E, open D, C. And that's the lowest note in the tune. So, so let's start right here on the C, and we're going to do this. Just listen. All right, here we go. Ready on the C, on the G string. Ready? C, D, E, F natural, G, open A, B flat. C, D, open E, F, G, A, G. We're going to repeat this when we get to C. Come right on back up. That's uh, all the scale notes we need. I got somebody. Oh, Doug Smith's here. Yes, I think Doug. I like. I think my chords are pretty reliable. My transcription is not so reliable. If you weren't here right when I started streaming, I did mention I don't like my transcription. I did this a few weeks ago, and sometimes I do these things really late at night, and I haven't had a chance to mess with it since then. And I, there's some mistakes. So I'm warning you that uh, we're, this is a general guide. We're going to do it mostly by ear. It doesn't match the way I usually play this tune. I kind of was trying to follow the recording and I made a couple of goofs. And also I don't play it exactly the way that uh, Kenny Baker does and that's okay. You know, I've got my own passable version of this tune. So just don't rely too heavily on the dots, especially in the second part or in the bridge part. Uh, so, but I think the chords are fairly reliable on this thing. It's got an A flat in it. So let's talk about that A flat. That appears a lot in this tune. Uh, the A flat, it would be the note you'd play on the D string. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, let's, let's start on this F. Let me turn my tuner off, save my battery. Uh, come on, turn off, there you go. Start right here on this, a, on this F. Now play the G. Now instead of going to the open A, put your finger right next to the, your pinky right next to the, uh, the, the third finger that's playing the G, this note's playing the G, right? Put that guy right there. Oh yeah, it's a minor third. Okay, so let's play. You gotta find that note a lot. That note is a lot, appears a lot in this tune, that, that A flat. Okay, so just remember that. So let's let's look at the, let me play the first couple bars of the tune. Like I said, the the first part is uh, the transcription is pretty reliable. The bridge part has got some things in it I don't like now that I'm looking at how I noted it out. So, but that's okay. All right, All right so let's. So that's the first little bit. So play this this A. Find this A on the E string. So, all right, 
let's go. Let me play you the first four bars of the tune. And then we're going to end up on that A flat. Find that with your pinky, without, just out in space here. Because you don't get to leave, you know. Find that. Pinky, or you can use, actually, you could use your third finger if you wanted to. Because it's just, uh, for some people, it might be actually easier to make it with the third finger, actually, uh, and just slide back down to the G. So it's kind of like this. kind of cool if you just use your uh, we're all about experimentation you know but uh, that sounds kind of slinky I like that so what I'm doing is I'm playing the A flat with my third finger uh, and going down to the G that sounds kind of cool actually Works good actually. Okay, so that's the first little opening bit of the tune. All right, and then let's go on from there. Let's well, let's play that again together, kind of slow. So here we go, right here. The pickup notes are. Try that one more time. One, two, three, one, two. One more time. Let's try it. All right. How we doing? Good. Bruce. The chords. Yes, the chords. That's why I'm here. Okay, good. Yeah. The chord. The secret chord in this tune is an A flat. And. Uh, uh, I'll have to ask Doug how he makes that, but I would probably just play some kind of a bar chord there, you know, like a, uh, uh, a hillbilly bar chord. I might go grab my guitar toward the end and mess with it a little bit. But Start one more time. What am I doing? One more time. <laughs> So that's the first opening bit of the tune. Let me play a little bit more. I usually play it, I think that's pretty much what uh, what is on the recording, but I usually do something a little different there. Which sounds a little uh, bluesier, you know. And that's your minor third again, so that is your blues note, you know. So what I'm doing there is I'm going, I'm sliding that, I'm sliding off that note. That's, you know, you have to think like a, a country singer scooping the notes, you know. That's how you want to sound on the fiddle. I'm not actually going all the way, I'm on this A flat. I'm not actually going all the way down to the G. Uh-huh, let's play that. Now let's play uh, uh, all the way from the beginning to where I just stopped right there. So we'll just listen one time and then we'll do it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's do that together now. That's the that's kind of gets you like halfway through the first little part there. And then so the way this tune is constructed, it's like there's two times through the tune, the basic tune, and then there's kind of a bridge, and then there's like a finish up part, 
at the end. So where you repeat uh, one of the parts from the beginning there. So it's not really a two-part tune necessarily. It's got this kind of bridge thing. All right, here we go. One, two, really slow. One, two. Let's do that again right away. And then, then what we do basically is we're going to repeat that. So let's play through that one more time together. And then we'll, then we're just kind of going to go on. Okay. Here we go. So let's play, uh, start back at the beginning and play to that point right there, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to play through the whole first bit one time, just kind of we have to get it in our head, you know? All right, so here we go again. <laughs> There's always a good discussion about, and we're having one right now here, about Bill Monroe and Kenny Baker and all the things Kenny did for, for Bill, you know? Uh, to me, as a fiddler... He made those actually in a lot of those Bill Monroe tunes into fiddleable tunes because Bill Monroe's uh, mandolin style was so idiosyncratic and not very. Uh, a lot of what he did was not very adaptable to the fiddle, and he kind of he created that sort of style. But uh, Kenny, you know, being a really super clear, clean, and mostly single note kind of fiddler, man, he really turned those tunes on their head made them so fiddlers would want to play them, you know. Here we go. Back at the beginning. the kind of uh, bar that doesn't melodically, does something melodically that I wouldn't think to do, but it sounds good. So that A flat, A flat. Okay, let's play that little bit one more time. beginning and I'm going to play it to that point because we're ready to go into the bridge there. Uh, okay, so let's let's see how we're doing here. I am in a mall. <laughs> yes, don't go near a mall, folks. It's too close to Christmas. Don't go near a mall. 
Oh, yeah. Probably if she's in a mall in Nova Scotia, it's probably the uh, uh, Moose, Moose Mall or something like that. Is it that what it's called? <laughs> Pine Tree Mall. I don't know. But uh, what is the name of that mall? All right, let's, let's, play, uh, let's play a little bit of this Mississippi Waltz from the beginning all the way to where uh, we're ready to go into the bridge here. I'll try not to make any mistakes. Here we go. One, two, three. So it starts on the and of two. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two. Ba-da, ba-da, like that. And if you missed the first bit too, I did play through extensively the F scale. So you might want to go back and look at that later on. Uh, but let's, let's keep going here. One, two, three, one, two. Sounded good. Let's do it one more time. Right back to the beginning. Remember, one, two, three, one, two. to this bridge part. So now we're going to really lean heavily on this A flat chord. It happens again and again here. So now, so there's some there's some double stops in here and some requires some playing in second position and requires some playing in third position. But what I'm gonna to try to figure out here as we go along is how can we play this without the double stops first? Because the double stops are the part that make this tune really hard. I'm still gonna show them to you and make my own mistakes on them, but uh, I think we can still get away with playing this tune nicely without the double stops. So let's see what we can do. So how about that? Now there's a really hard chord there. Okay, so what happens there? Uh, we're gonna just play. We're gonna play a C chord there. Uh, so C chord that I'm gonna use is this E on the E on the D string and this. I'm just trying to adapt this tune to to where we don't have to use the double stops if we don't want to. So let's. And then you go. So uh, let's let's try this bridge one more time here, and then I'll show you the double stops. But I'm uh, I realized when I was messing with this right before we started, uh, it's been a while since I played this tune. So the double stops uh, there. There's there's one nice slidey one that's pretty hard to hit. I would have to sit here and practice it for 20 minutes before I could hit it consistently. But we're gonna I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Or if I've been playing warmed up all afternoon, I could play it. But uh, with the uh, morning stiff fingers, it's gonna not gonna come too easily. So so so. So here, what, what we're really wanting you to do is so now what? So what's happening there is I'm playing this E flat, uh, A flat, sorry, with the C. 
So what? So the chord is A flat. So the so so the notes in the A flat scale are A flat C E flat. The A flat triad is uh, is A flat C E flat. So uh, let's let's. So what we're playing is now that's kind of hard to hit, you know, because you might be used to hitting this one, which we're going to use in a minute. So that's so we're going to play. Now, you can play it two ways. You can play the A flat with your pinky and the C with your second finger, or you can already slide right up to second position. So here we go. I'm playing it the second position way right now. I'm, put, I'm putting my first finger on the C and the third finger on the A flat. Trying to keep track your comments. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, trying to track your comments here. So here we go. Yeah, Roger made a good point there. If you read the tab, it shows you the position better than uh, the dots will. Because sometimes you look at a chord, and, and if you and if you're like me, and you have most things you play are in first position, you go, "Well, those notes aren't possible." You know, like that. I cannot stack those notes that way in first position, and that's the clue that you're either in second or third. Okay, so so if we play. So what's happening there is I'm playing this. Again, I'm using the second position version. Playing the C on the A string with my first finger. Third finger's playing the A flat on the D string. And that, no, that I'm playing. So I'm staying in second position. So what I'm doing is I'm playing third finger A flat, second finger G, first finger F. Now, see, it's resolving. So it's A flat, A flat, and then F again. So now what I'm playing is C with my first finger on the A string, and the A on the D string with my third finger. So I'm going, here's the A flat chord, and now I'm getting up to F. That's F chord because it's, that's the, that's the third and the fifth of the A scale. So, okay. So, so let's uh, let's play those two bars that uh, that have the A flat to the F chord. Okay. So, here we go. I'm just going to use that regular C chord. But what the what Baker does a lot of times on this recording, and I think I think in my history of playing this tune, I've used that C chord a lot. But here's what he what what you hear Kenny Baker doing is whoa, what was that? Oh my gosh. Okay, so what we're doing is we're playing inversions of the C7 chord. So C7 chord is this. So it's C, E, G, B flat, C, B flat, G, E, C. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's figure out what went on there. So what I did was I started with a second inversion of, uh, of, the, uh, of the C7 chord. So what I'm playing on the D chord, I'm going to play a G. And on the A, no, no, sorry, on the D note of the D, the D string, I'm going to play a G with my third finger. Then I'm going to play with my first finger a B flat on the A string. So it's going to be like this. And believe me, if we had Doug here playing the C7 chord behind us, that would sound nice. It sounds a little oddly dissonant played by itself. So D, G. And, and I like to tune these things up. If you're, if you're new to doing this, the best way to test yourself is that's a G. Tune it up to the open G. Okay, close enough. And then the B flat. 
you can tune to the open D thinking in terms of the B flat chord, but now here comes the tricky bit. And see, I didn't quite hit it. <laughs> but so you have to be ready to make some adjustment. So what I'm playing now is I'm up in third position and I'm playing a fourth inversion of the C7 chord because I've got a B flat on the bottom. I'm playing with my third finger, a B flat, on the on the D string. Now again, this is why I play the C chord a lot. <laughs> But this is like food for practice. So I'm playing this B flat on the D string. I'm playing the D with my first finger. And you're going to go, now possum, there's no D in the C7 chord. No, there's not. But actually a D played across a C7 makes it a C9 chord, which is a, an extension of the... Uh, C7, the dominant chords, you know, you can extend the dominant chords. You have the 7, 9th, 11th, 13th. And so we're playing, actually what we're technically playing, if uh, you want to get down in the grit of the theory, is we're playing a C9 chord. But that doesn't matter because everybody, it, there's no C9 in bluegrass. So everybody's going to be playing a C7 behind that, you know. But that's going to take a lot of practice. Hey, I hit it. And when you get one thing you got to learn is when you're playing those kind of uh, or work on rather. Now you can tune that D to the open D, but the B flat is out there in the breeze. So what you have to do is attune your ear and play very lightly with your left hand when you make those transitions and adjust, adjust, adjust. As soon as you hear it, you have to start moving, micro moving your finger to adjust the, the intonation. Ah, I nailed it. Okay, so so let's just keep that in mind. But now, in our world right now, this morning, we're going to play, which is, I'm just kind of doing a swoop across the G string. So I'm playing this C chord. C, I was e, on the, e on the D string, C on the A string. Yep, and let's uh, let me have a little sip of coffee here. All right, so let's see if we can play this part. I'll try to do the I'll do the double stops. They're not going to sound very good, but I'll do them. way I've got it written with the hard double stop. So here we go. See how... Oh. That's what we're working toward, but I'm not playing it this morning. So that's why I'm using this. It sounds... Sounds nice. Not exactly what uh, what Kenny did, but it, it's a little more manageable. So let's uh, and so from there, let's go and play. Uh, what what would happen from there is you're playing the last bit of that first part we did to end up. So it's going to be. the whole tune, why don't we? Just a couple times through. And uh, you can always come back to this. I'm going to repost this on YouTube for my patrons on patreon.com forward slash Charlie Walden. And so you can, once, once you get it on YouTube, you can slow it down. You can do whatever you want with it. I'll clean up, uh, I'll edit it a little bit too. Take out some of the intro and all that so there's not as much material there to deal with. But uh, let's move on. Let's play this whole thing. One, two, three, one, two.
I'll play it one more time without the hard double stop. Uh, as you can see, you know, uh, I like to show you warts and all. I don't, I, had, I can't play everything. Perfect, but <laughs> I try. <laughs> there's some, there's some really hard stuff out there, and and uh, in fiddle world, and it's good to aspire. But uh, often, there's nothing wrong with making some minor adjustments to make it more playable. Kenny Baker, you know, if we could all play like him. All right, here we go. So I'm going to play that. When I get to that second part, the bridge, I'm not going to use that uh, hard chord. I'm going to use uh, my ad adaptation. All right, here we go. That's a toughie. I think that's the toughest one we've done in a while. That's got some. That's got some good stuff in it. But uh, if you need a ref, uh, any, if you have any questions about it, just you can always email me bigfiddleshow at gmail.com or email me through the Patreon app. If there's something you missed there. But I think that does it for this morning, folks. I'm glad everybody came and enjoyed themselves, and uh, we'll see you. Hey, you know, don't forget our upcoming programs. I just like to tell you about our upcoming programs. We have the holiday special coming up. This coming Friday at 8 p.m. Central on YouTube. Okay. And then the final stream, live stream of the year is the New Year's Eve broadcast, the New Year's Eve Blast for 2022. Also at 8 p.m. on New Year's Eve. So not on Friday. I think New Year's Eve's on a Saturday this year. And uh, so that'll be at 8 p.m. Central time as well. So I hope to see you all there. And we're about ready to say. We're about ready to say good night and thanks, Kim, for coming. I'm gonna get in the little box. Everybody likes to wave, wave at us, wave at us. Hope everybody enjoyed themselves, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take her easy.